check this out. We're back with the FMS Zero. If you haven't already, check out my other video, unbox and build video. Nice looking warbird, but for me, I would like a gyro in it. Doesn't come with the gyro. So I think this size plane definitely needs a gyro, especially if you're flying a lot in the wind. So I'll run you through that today. Not a lot of room inside. I could have went with something like this Eagle Hobby Gyro, but it's probably a little bit too big really, and a little bit too heavy. By the time you put that in, by the time you put the gyro in, and my favorite receiver, um, you know, there's a, there's a bit of weight there, and it needs a bit of room too. So for this build, I'm going to be using the Radio Link Gyro. The A series stands for airplane, doesn't it? I did try out this gyro in our Volantex P51 Mustang, and it works perfect. Very little to do with the gyro, not too many settings, so it's quite easy to use. So I'm going to have another go and try it out with our Zero because it's nice and small and compact, nice and light. Here's how it comes, a bit shiny. You get the A-series, or you can get the D-series for the Delta wings. Get some sort of lead. I normally don't need that. A little bit of double-sided tape, but I use hot glue. Stickers come off. Stickers come off this one. You can see that tiny little arrow there. It's got a face forward. That's the direction it needs to be. Has a little button on the top there, a little button on the top. And I'll be using one of these Fly Sky receivers. Nice and small, nice and light. Plug straight in, S bus, but I've got to change the wires over. For some reason, it doesn't work for me, so I've got to swap the yellow and white wire over. I've got to solder them on, then it all works for me. Nice tiny little receiver, very nice, nice and compact. The two of them, great combination for this for this little warbird. These receivers have been working great for me, no problem so far, so I'm going to stick with them. Here's my plane now. Start off with um, the wires for the main wing ran up through that hole. If you go back and watch the build video, this is a big hole there where the wires run through. Wasn't happy about that because there's nowhere to mount the gyro, so I've ran them through the front there, no problems there. And I've filled that hole in with a credit card, a blank credit card. So now my gyro, I just glued that down, pointing towards the front. Remember, it's got the little button on the front. I've glued it down with a little bit of hot glue. Remember to keep a, your glue away from that button or you might have a problem then. And nice and straight, good enough. I did quickly um, plug everything in just as a rough check because I just had to bind up my receiver. And as you can see there, I've cut off that white wire and soldered on the yellow wire. That works for me. I just do what works, simple as that. So we've got our receiver. Then we've got channel 4, rotor, channel 3, throttle, channel 2, elevator, channel 1, ailerons. Here's a manual, very handy to download. Just go to the Radio Link website, download the manual. Give you a quick, does tell you where our channels go. 
face forward, we've got a button on the top, we've got some lights. When you plug your battery in and hold it steady while it's being powered on and it's doing its checks, keep it still. Next thing you need to do is the attitude calibration. It says to do this first. Okay, normally we need a little bit nose up for the calibration of the gyro. So that's why I have bound, I have bound it to my receiver to start off with. And now we need to do the calibration once it's mounted in the plane. Do that first before we change all our channels. Got my plane on this block of foam. It's nice and level. The nose is up just a fraction, very little. Hopefully that's going to be all right. I have got the prop off. So we'll turn it around. Hopefully you can see what these lights are doing here. Got my radio on. Plug it in. There's a manual that says to hold your sticks down in the corners for three seconds. The green light flashes once. Means you calibrated the level. You calibrated the self level on it basically. So last time I did have a different receiver. I had to put this stick up in the corner. So we'll see how we go this time. We have a different receiver. Got my sticks. Have you inserted the lights? Stand in the corners. Light did flash, didn't it? So hopefully that's it. Hopefully that's calibrated, that's it. That's the level, calibrated. Maybe we have another go up in this corner. No, we get nothing. How about down in those corners? One, two, three. Get nothing. So they must be right in the manual because it is a different receiver. Down in that corner. There we go, we get a flash on light. Our attitude level is set. So it says that to do first. Now we can check our control surfaces. For some reason we have got number three, channel three light is on. So that's the way it come out of the box. So when these lights light up, um, you gotta push the button quickly to change the, the lights. I'll push it once, this front button. If I can get my finger in there. Here we go. Channel one is reversed. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. It's nice and bright. Here we go. Channel one is back to normal. Two quick pushes. Channel two is reversed. Two quick pushes. That's how you reverse it. Maybe we might want to check our, which way our surfaces are going. So lift up your main wing. That control surface is going up. So channel one is right. Lift it up. That's going in the right direction. Lift up our tail. Doesn't move much, but it should be enough. Elevator is going up. So channel two is going in the right direction. Doesn't need reversing. Rudder is a little bit hard. It wants to go in the direction that you're going. And that's right. So that's good. I'll quickly push number one again. Yes. See how I lift the main wing up? Now the control service is going down. That's the wrong direction. So that's what these buttons do. Quickly push number one again. One time, we've changed, here we go, that's going in the right direction, so that's good. You see all that, so check it now on the radio, yep, 
Our right aileron is going up. Pull back. Elevator is going up. Right rudder. Right rudder is going up. Here we go. All right. Now I just need to put the prop on and check to see whether our motor is going in the right direction. I have got the throttle cut on. Got a piece of tape on the front of the motor just to check which way it's going. I believe facing towards me it should be anti-clockwise. And it's going anti-clockwise so that's going the right way. So this light on channel 3 must just mean that it's it's active basically I'm guessing. Um, because I can push it three times and nothing happens. And in the manual there's no mention of the third LED light. So channel 3, you mustn't be able to change channel 3. That's it. Just the light's always on. As you can see here, short press twice will reverse channel 2 at will. Short press four times will change channel 4. So that's real good. Shows you which way your sticks work, which is very nice. Very nice. It's got a vertical mode. Acro mode in here. It's got lots of options with the gyro, but I've gone for the easiest way, which is good. I didn't want to set up two switches. That's a bit complicated for me. So luckily it works for me, 100%. Rates is manual mode, zero is gyro, gyro mode, or stabilized mode, I like to call it. And for the stabilized mode, I like to call that self-level. That's a self-level mode for me. Minus 100%. And I have that on the top switch. Self-level mode. Self mode. Stabilised mode. mode. Manual mode. Manual mode. Everything's off. Self-level mode. That's how I've got it in the radio. Um, Ailerons, 100%, elevator, minus 100%, throttle, I've got the throttle cut, rudder is 100%, and there's our gyro. Up on my SD switch, I lock it up there, nice and easy to get to. Stabilise mode, self-level mode. Very nice. Back to my rates, not sure how they're going to go until I do the maiden. It's got 100%, which is normally pretty good on the self-level mode, isn't it? Going off my other planes in this category, 100%, you normally need that for the self-level. Then I've got a couple of rates set. And I like 30% Expo. I don't like my sticks too sensitive. Stabilised mode. mode just gives you a little bit of assistance. A little bit hard to see in the camera. You will see you just flip it up and that control service will go up. A little bit hard to see in the camera. Just see if a gust of wind gets you. Just straightens out the flight for you. Makes it a lot smoother in the air. Manual, Manual mode, you got nothing. Self -level mode. Back to self level. You can see that control service goes up as you lift it up. You can calibrate that self level at any time if, if you need to adjust that. Maybe you need a little bit more nose up, I don't know. Just depends on how fast you fly to, isn't it? You know, you might want a dead level. You're not too sure until you actually fly it which sort of level calibration you need. So keep that in mind. You may need to calibrate the level again and just be careful because that prop did spin when that green light flashed. 
So you may want someone to hold it for you, nice and still, or you may want to take your prop off again just to calibrate that level. And one thing I wanted to try, if it makes any difference, whether the plane is upside down or not. So I've got my plane upside down, I'll plug it in, see if it makes a difference. I think it still knows it's upside down, doesn't it? Well, that worked. Looks like you can plug it in upside down. I wouldn't recommend it, but it appears everything's still looking like it's going in the right way. See this? That definitely means it's upside down. It thinks it's upside down. So there you go. So I think that's why it wants you to calibrate the level first before you set up the plane so that you know so that the gyro knows which way it is pointing you can calibrate it upside down if you need to install it upside down maybe you can install it sideways i'm not too sure but that i'm guessing that's why it wants you to calibrate the level first before you do the control services but then once that's all done you can recalibrate the level at the field if you need to make a slight adjustment if it's not flying straight. Good enough. While I had the hot glue nice and hot, I put another setup in my Eshin F16. There it is there. Nice light setup. I definitely wanted a gyro in this plane. What I like is very easy to set up this gyro, very easy, not too much to do. All I did is copy over the plane, copy over the zero on my radio. So all the switches, all the rates, exactly the same. So we'll hope for the best, we'll fly this one too. Hopefully we'll fly perfect. I'll put the links for this gyro and receiver in the description below. Great setup, I'm very happy with this setup. Nice and easy to use. Hopefully it fly perfect. Thanks for watching.